Greetings, welcome back to the channel. I'm Commander Tyrael, and it's Friday where I'm from. I've been furiously editing all week. Made a video on the PGO2, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Also the Italian Sayeta. Today I felt like just playing the game, and as a consequence of making the PGO2 video, I had a lot of fun with the Japanese 3.3 lineup. They have a lot of ships at 3.3, all with a diverse range of capabilities. I basically stopped playing Japanese Coastal when their Hibiru class, or their Soya Nan, and their Chikugu were the top, top tier. Um, since then, there's been a few additions that I haven't really played, so today we're going to go out and have a look at the Ikazuchi and see how the Chikugu f fares after the damage model changes. My Ikazuchi is fairly stock, I've only just unlocked the Fire and Toolkits, but I've noticed it has a very high Silver Lion rewards modifier. I'll probably make a video about both of these ships at some point explaining their history, but for now we're just going to have some fun. I f uh, the HEVT rounds, the AP rounds, and the HE rounds from the 76mm Mark 33 are pretty powerful, but they're not as powerful as the Soviet equivalent as you might expect. Both ships have the same armament of two 76mm guns. The Ikazuchi has one on the fore, one on the aft. The Chikugu has them both in the fore turret. So let's get into it. North Port is one of my favourite maps. I quite enjoy this map. It's really good at this battle rating for torpedo ambushes through the alleyways at the Charlie Point. And if you're playing a destroyer, you can also really sneak up and get some effective damage. Short range semi armor piercing with your destroyers is great on this map. All right, we'll get the Project 204 and see if he can give us some smoke to cover this passageway. At a low battle rating, there tends to be a swarm of coastal boats sometimes here, and I don't really want to participate in that fight just yet. Hoping for assistance from an ally I don't know is asking for a lot. Oh, hello, we've got one of my subscribers in the battle, Wusu. Hope I pronounced that correctly. G'day, mate. Good to see you. I won't shout that at you, though, in, in capital letters. Okay, taking stock of the situation, we have a fair amount of coastal support from our own team. So I'm going to just skirt around the outsides here. Oh, we've lost the Project 204 to an Italian MC490. They're quite potent boats. I haven't used it myself, but a few viewers have said to me that I should check it out very soon. Got a G5 here, trying to make a quick capture of the Bravo point. Didn't manage to kill him, but that's... Oh, we did kill him. Did he sink? Or was that... I got the kill and the assist. Huh, interesting. All right. Now I'm going to make my way towards the Charlie point. It seems like my team's kind of melting. Coastal team is being chewed up by this Italian boat. Maybe I need to change my plan. Yes, I will. I'm going to head around to the rear of the Bravo point, coming in from the enemy captures uh, enemy spawn point, and see if I can catch this Italian coastal boat off guard. These Bofors are pretty powerful, but they're not stabilized, so they tend to take a fair amount of shaking and wobbling when you are opening fire. I could have sworn they used to be stabilized, but maybe that was just a bug that was fixed. This boat has had a few changes to it. It's had its torpedo armament changed as well. So we cut the speed to try and get some stability, but I don't have any angle on the stern turret. We've lost our front bow fours. This is not going very well at all. We're getting hammered. I'm running a universal belt, a mixture of AP and high explosive in the 40 mil. And fortunately, our friend Usu has managed to take my friend managed to help us out. We have 4% crew left, so I doubt we're going to be very, very useful, especially in a, in a destroyer attack. They only have to clip us once. Call in artillery on the spawn point, because you can do that, and I like it. I'm not going to let this Italian boy catch me off guard as I'm trying to get out of his spawn point. Uh, speak of the devil, here he is. Get the bow force on him. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to have Spawn protection, and we managed to get him down to 7% crew, so he's pretty much done for. Feed another kill to my friend over there. 
in his Russian coastal lineup. All right, let's take out the Ikazuchi. She's fairly slow, 42 kilometers an hour at her current state. When she's spaded, it says that she'll be about 48 kilometers an hour. As I was saying before, just to let my friend here know that the torpedoes have changed a lot in this uh, in the PT-15. They are 120 km an hour torpedoes now. They previously had a 1,000 kilo torpedo warhead from the American torpedo line. I can't remember which designation torpedo it is, but it's brutally strong with its torpex explosive. The best thing about frigates that are mildly slow is you get to have a bit of a conversation as you head towards the capture point. It lets you give it a little bit of a think to what you're going to do. Now it appears my friend there is capturing Bravo, so I might head in there to give him some support. I can see some destroyer smoke off to the starboard side there in the distance near Charlie. Looks like a smoke screen. Pretty, pretty full team, so we we are in for a prolonged fight by the look of it. We have a few destroyers, but how useful they will be is of... There we go. We've got a big Clemson. Caught me mid-thought. Mid All right. Do we engage this Clemson, or do I wait for the Farragut that's about to cross this? Yeah, we're going to get the Farragut. Try and aim high on the deck, because the hull will not be penetrated by this shell. You'll just be a mild, mild annoyance. You might get some fragments through to the engine room if they're an uh, unarmored destroyer with no frag armor. But mostly I find it most effective when you're heading for the soft compartments of the superstructure. We didn't do much crew damage. I was hitting too high there, hitting the stacks. I really want to hit his front turrets. Now these Mark 33 guns, the 76 millimeters, they you either love them or you or hate them. You have to be extremely mindful of the reload, uh, the overheat on them. My usual method when I'm not actively engaged is to fire 10 rounds per gun, let it cool off. That gets you about halfway through the heat meter. Obviously, when you're fully engaged, you just got to do what you have to do. But if you have your volume set correctly, once you get to a dangerous level of heat, you'll start to hear a ticking. And that indicates that the guns are overheating. Right. Bravo Point has been captured. My friend is still there. He must have been taken down. Now we're just trying to aim for the front gun and the bridge of this Clemson, just so that we can make him do what we want him to do. You don't have a lot of killing power, but you do have a lot of annoyance factor. And you can whittle them down if they don't focus you. And this, this boat is surprisingly uh, sturdy. I really like the damage model. You can tank a few shots, you can angle her, she's fairly long, so you can hide those crew compartments. And I've had good luck with this boat so far, despite only having a few games in her. That said, I am fairly used to the 76mm US guns. One of the good things about this is it also has the modern rangefinder, so it the update time is very fast at 3 seconds. And the capture time is 6 seconds. Alright, Bravo is going to be secured by my friend, so... Alright. We're going to be rear-flanked by these destroyers that have come around. I'm going to head to C point. I'll let my friend handle B, and hopefully he can come with me. Now there is a narrow inlet just there between those two mountain rocks on the starboard side. I'm not sure if I can make it through there with this vessel, but it is quite handy to sneak through to that Charlie point. We are narrow enough, but it is a bit zigzaggy and having to turn in a long ship is not a good idea. Alright, Bravo is secured, so we're going to stabilize that ticket bleed. 
And if I can get out to Charlie before these destroyers really notice what I'm doing, then we'll be able to stabilize the game. Going for the bridge and the front turret again, just to be that super annoying dude. I can't do a great amount of damage. But if I can get him to turn and hit all these torpedo racks, that will do a fair amount of crew damage too. You'll notice that the silver line rewards are fairly good, just despite not actually doing much damage to him. Here we go, we can see those torpedo racks now, so we're taking fire at them. Rather than aiming at the water line, try and keep your aiming reticle just below the top deck, and that will help you land shots on the deck. And you raise or lower the reticle as desired. These close range fights, it doesn't really matter the ranging because you're trying to shoot through the ship. All right, we'll head to first person mode. I wish I had some torpedoes. I better warn Usu about the Clemson that's pushing B. Oh, he's in the Project 204, I believe, or the 201. And that has the 25 millimeter cannons. They are very powerful. Quad 25 millimeters. Right, he has taken orders, good lad. We could just win this battle. Destroyers are spawn camping us and we have lost all of our team. So it's just up to us too and a few teammates that are out pushing to the alpha point now. Let him know that I'm in stealth mode so I won't be helping him to fight unless I get in trouble myself. Uh, I really want to take that Farragut down. But what can you do when you've only got a little gun? Despite that, we've done 4,400 damage. Okay, we have an interloper, Clemson. <clears throat> Off to the port bow. Making sure that we're still heading towards Charlie. Take out his front guns to pull out his teeth. Now, both of the American Clemsons have different torpedo armaments, and one is much more dangerous than the other. Oh, look at that silver lines. 2,000 silver lines. That's pretty good. High explosive shells just seem to really milk it. Try and put some pressure on the Clemson that's pushing Bravo, but I can't quite see him, so unfortunately I can't help there, mate. Sorry. Where has our other friend gone? We sort of put ourselves at a precarious position here between two packs of destroyers, which we aren't really capable of fighting head to head without some sneaky tactics. Whoa, I really wish I had some depth charges right about now. They're super risky to bring, but I like to take those risks and I would really love to get close to this Clemmy and show him my depth. Things are looking good. We have stabilized the game and we are now in the lead. Not ticket wise, but capture zone wise we are. Just need to keep an eye on everybody. Oh dear, we have American Torpedo Death inbound. I cannot stay on the capture point. I need to stay mobile. I really wish I had some HEVT. That would make it really easy, but unfortunately we don't have that luxury. Such is the stock grind of a vessel. We're going to make the most of it. We don't have smoke. Oh no, this Clemson's now come around. What's he going to do? He's shooting armor piercing at us, I believe. We need to spray his decks down and get him out of the fight so I can concentrate on this aerial threat. Present the rear Bofors to the target. <clears throat> and we head away from the target to increase the time that it's going to take for his torpedoes to reach us. We're not a terribly fast ship. So if he launches those, we need to do some wiggling to get out of the way. Also, while trying to dodge this guy, because he wants us. So far, he hasn't attempted to drop fish that I can see. Now the torpedo racks are turning on us. Looks like we have some air support in the form of a fighter. Where is our enemy? He's dropped the torpedoes. We got two fish in the water coming astern. We need to... Oh, this is going to be tight. How do we judge this? Line the boat up with the torpedo. And at the last moment, we're going to slip across it. 
we do not want to give it too much angle at all. And now we just got to, oh, we've been hit on the starboard side by two Clemson torpedoes. But the main thing is to dodge those American airdrop torpedoes. They can be absolutely deadly. Now, we're going to abandon the fires. We're going to just get on the flooding. We can survive this as long as we stop that flooding and don't take any additional damage. But I did call it. I was about to be torpedo food. Just not the way I predicted. Just goes to show you cannot concentrate on everything at the same time. You do have to just prioritize the threats as they present themselves. Being hit by that American torpedo would have been much more catastrophic to our frigate. Right, so we're not going to let him come around again for another run in case he's got more left on those racks. Fortunately, that air support is fairly effective against the Clemson. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're reloading. We'll keep him in our starboard stern. Come on, get that bridge. We need to take away his ability to dictate this battle. Bridge is down, now we need to take out his armament, then his torpedo racks, and then his rear guns. And then repeat the process. If that doesn't work, we are doomed. <laughs> it's quite the hectic battle. And it's paying off. Look at those rewards as we finish off this Clemson. Excellent fight there. That was a great fight. Great duel. Okay, now we have a Hatsuharu. And what appears to be an Aquiloni. All right, so we'll take out the Aquiloni because I believe the guns are more powerful than on the Japanese destroyer. This guy has armor-piercing rounds. Japanese high explosive can be negated somewhat by the hull. Things are getting dicey. Hatsuhara has a full load of torpedoes pointed straight at us. We're going to try and take out that rear gun. We just need to hit it once. There we go. Take it out. Three more guns to go. We're keeping the serpentine fashion, not giving him a predictable torpedo path. Hatsuharu has a vast amount of torpedoes. They're not the best torpedoes, but they will still destroy us on such low crew. That rear turret is taken out again, taking out the torpedoes. He's now launched fish, fish in the water, turning to port to counteract that launch. The sooner you make your adjustments to a torpedo attack, the more chance you have to survive. Unless he anticipates your turn and launches them in that trajectory as well. Despite our best efforts, it looks like we're going to go down. Not to worry though, I think we made a really good account of ourselves on that occasion. A cab, an aircraft kill, we survived a torpedo attack, we sank at Clemson. We put some pressure on them. We didn't manage to consolidate that capture zone, but we had to get moving to avoid the torpedo attack. No, unfortunately, Hatsuharu is not dead. No, but my Chikugo is much more capable. It's almost spaded. And I did that in a time when this boat was really painful to play before the damage model changes. It's much more resilient now than it used to be. And I haven't had a great amount of luck with the armor-piercing rounds, but they are effective at just chipping away. They don't seem to earn you as much silver lions. One of the interesting things about the weapon is that it has magazines. So each gun has 150 ammo before you've got like an 11 second reload time. It also makes it less worthwhile to change between shells because you have that significant reload time to switch the shell types. So when I play these boats, I like to commit to one shell type, especially when I'm in an engagement. Looks like we got rid of that Aquiloni and we managed to kill a Yak-1 somehow. Nice. As we're just chatting away. <laughs> Hatsuharu is making an aggressive push. Is he going for the Bravo point? The Aquiloni looks like it's on its way to the grave. Just need to take stock of the situation while we wait for everything to fix, because, you know... 
Okay, and it wasn't the uh, Aquiloni, it was the Turbini, sorry. Okay, Hatsuharu, let's go. We're gonna have a joust. He wants to play a bow on game, we shall do that. We've gotta be mindful that he may be coming close for a torpedo spread, so I want to do something very sneaky to dictate the course of this fight. We're gonna wait till he comes bow on. He's level on to us now. Wait till he hits a turn, either towards the, sh uh, the shore or away from it. If you can't get him to do that, we're just going to take out his front guns. That makes them, everyone turns when they get their front guns taken out. And now we're going to take the bridge, shoot those guys that we can see there in the bridge. Ha ha, dash. Now, he's stuck in a repair loop. So we're going to make sure that he has no torpedo defenses. They look to be unloaded. He's bringing that rear turret around, but it's it's too late. We're going to launch a torpedo spread. Now these torpedoes only have 40 kilos of TNT, so to get him, we need to batter through the same spot. First torpedo is to hit the fuel. Second torpedo hopefully makes it through to the boiler room. There we go, hit. We've taken out that boiler room and we've managed to take out one of the engines. We've done a significant amount of crew damage, so now we just need to get close and hose him down with AP through every compartment. And we keep it methodical. Go again, one more shot to the turret. And he's been cleaned up. Rank does not matter. Okay, now it's time for Clemson here to go to the same grave gonna wake our way all along the breadth of the ship trying to get through to those engine rooms this shell doesn't have a lot of post penetration damage so you need to hit something solid and getting through to the boiler rooms is a sure way to kill the engineering team we'll try and hit the gear box at the back yeah I think you're right mate they have certainly won this one of the best things about the gun is while you're waiting for it to cool down, you can just have a friendly chat to your opponents or your friends. <laughs> it's got a very fast repair time too, this gun. Quite fond of it. I'm excited to get the next one up. I think it's the Ayanami. It has two of these on the front, but I think it is at a higher battle rating. The only thing that really makes the 3.3 lineup unenjoyable is running into teams of SKRs. Fortunately today, I haven't had that issue. Okay, another Clemson. We're running very low on crew. I've been paying very little attention to that. It's gonna make our way. Oh, we've got the elevation issue with the gun. Can't lower it. There we go. Too far off the nose, I think, when we were turning. Yeah, it's happening again. Oh, we've been hit from the port side. Clemson coming in. Here we go. See, this would be an ideal time to change ammunition, but I just simply can't spare 11 seconds. Try and hit the torpedo racks. Didn't have any luck. He has launched a few fish in the water. Take out his bridge. So we can sort of... Oh, there's a torpedo. I should have remembered about that guy. We're just going to try and inch past that. Ooh, very close. Very close. Oh, no. Clemson's bow in, and we've taken our final shot. That's the match. Game, set, match. Well played, gentlemen. Well played to Usu. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Looks like I'm about to be finished with the torpedo coup de gras. And uh, you know what? I don't even care. I love this game. That was fun. That's what I want to see more of. If you want to see more of it too, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and let's get this game mode back to the top. 82,000 silver lions. See what I mean? That's, that was pretty good. We got 98% activity, but have a fantastic day. Commander Tyrael out.